What is up guys, Andy Forrest Dean Runner here, back with another video, and today is part one of a two-part video series where we're going to be discussing the running shoes that I'm using during my summer training. Three times a year I aim to mix up the running shoes that I am using just for reviewing purposes and to give my feet something a little bit different and to try out new shoes and new brands. So today we're halfway through or approaching halfway through the summer period of training and I wanted to share with you the six shoes that I've been using during these first couple of months and then of course talk about some of the shoes that I'm aiming to get in to review for the second part of this summer training. So if you're excited for today's video guys make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content and Without further ado, we'll start with the Easy Day Trainers. So we'll start off with the Asics Nova Blast. I'm going to keep this really, really brief because you guys have seen way too many videos of this shoe on my channel. But I'll tell you exactly how I've used it and then we'll move on to the next shoe. For those of you who are new here, I've put 250 miles into this shoe and still counting. It's holding up really well and I've used this thing for pretty much every single type of run and I wouldn't shy away from using it from any type of run. This is my all-round shoe of the year so far. For me, it does absolutely everything. I've done long runs, easy runs, tempo runs, intervals, steady runs, you name it. We have done it in this shoe. I even compared it to the Nike ZoomX Vaporfly Next Percent in the shoe off video that we did over at the track and it held up really well. So this is the first shoe that I've been using and this, uh, using, and this thing has been absolutely soaking up the miles. Then we move on to the Nike React Myla. The tank, the heavy artillery. This thing has got 86 miles in it, so we're approaching 100. It's taking its time because it is not a shoe I'm enjoying, if I'm perfectly honest with you, and I can assure you that when we get this thing to 100, this is one that will be retired and moved to daily casual wear. I will not continue running in it. However, we've done everything in this shoe again with the testing. After the testing, I have kept this thing purely for easy runs. I think I've done a steady run in it, but again, it just is such a heavy shoe and sadly the most unenjoyable shoe alongside the Kinvara 11 which I talked about back earlier in the year which I had in my first segment the first set of shoe reviews so this thing is the Kinvara of this summer training a shoe that I'm just not getting on with not enjoying to be fair it's really comfortable very plush very padded a very nice casual shoe but for running it's just a little bit too heavy for me but as I said easy runs the odd steady run here and there, but literally that is it and how I've been using the shoe. So we move on to the New Balance Fresh Foam Tempo and the shoes now are gonna to start to get a little bit lighter, a little bit snappier and getting into realms where we've dealt with the easy stuff now, the Nova Blast and the React Myler. Were those easy days? This thing now I bought as the first speedier shoe for me to try out in this summer period. It held up really well. I think it was 110 miles in it so far. I've put it just to the back burner so I can get some more testing done in some other shoes, but we reached 100 really easy really well and this thing held up well good it's for me it was a very good solid shoe nothing fancy but it did the job I've done lots of speed work in this shoe lots of intervals as well as lots of easy and steady runs for me the only downside with this shoe is with some new balance I have to size up and when you get to a size 13 you're at 12 and a half, 13 and a half, 14 and a half, 15 and a half, so on and so forth. And so I'm normally a 13 and a half, but I had to go 14 and a half. And although it's not a major issue, I did have a lot of extra material up here. I've got a lot of room in and around the toe box, and there just is quite a bit of shoe. And comparing that to the 1080 version 10, which I tested out at the beginning of the year, this is meant to be a lighter, springier version of that shoe. And it literally came in just a smidgen under weight-wise, that shoe. So actually I wasn't shedding any weight and what I was gaining was more ground contact feel because we have this shorter uh, stack height in the front here. I think it's 16 or 18 mil. So it's the shoe that for me is the first time I felt the ground in in a very, very long time. But it did okay. It did absolutely fine. It did everything I wanted it to do. Got it to 100 miles and now we're testing others. Before I forget and we get onto the even speedier shoes, we have the Nike 
Pegasus 37. Yes, this shoe is in for testing. I have zero miles in this thing yet, but I thought I'd include it just to let you guys know if you weren't aware that I do have this shoe and I do intend on taking it out later this week for some first impressions. So this for me is gonna kind of slot into the easy day, steady day state. Replace the Myla because I just cannot get on with the Myla. And I'm hoping that this thing is gonna be a little bit better. The Myla for me in my size was 14 and 0.1 ounces or something crazy, 417 grams. This is 376 grams. So it's still heavy artillery, but I gotta be honest with you, when I'm walking around in the house in it, I'm not, it's nothing spectacular, but it feels a darn sight better than the React Myla. So this thing is gonna slot into the daily easy steady run shoe and obviously i'll give you guys updates as we go and moving on to the other newest edition the second speedier lightweight shoe that we have in our rotation the brooks hyperion tempo a shoe that i'm very quickly falling in love with i've only got two runs in this shoe at the point of recording this video but so far so good under 10 ounces in my UK size 13, which is an absolute blooming miracle, because to get any shoe under that, I'm looking at a race shoe. The only shoes I've had under that that's not a racing shoe is the Rincon. So this is really nice to be running in such a lightweight, basic, simple shoe that does the job and gets it done. And this, this ladies and gentlemen, is everything I was looking for in a speedier day shoe. And this is why I was just slightly disappointed with the New Balance Fresh Foam Tempo because that thing came in at 12 point something ounces, whereas this is 9.8. And for a speedier shoe, you want something lightweight, something snappy, and as much as the Tempo was snappy, it certainly wasn't as lightweight as I wanted it to be. So this thing is certainly gonna be a great addition in terms of moving forward, those mile repeats, intervals. I'm gonna be saving this for tempo day stuff, but I'll be honest with you, I could certainly run easy in this shoe as well. Again, this is gonna be a bit of a jack of all trades shoe. I'm certainly gonna to lean towards this shoe for the speedier stuff, but on the whole, this thing can do absolutely anything. Moving on to the New Balance Fuel Cell TC, the long run specialist, and maybe a bit of tempo specialist, but for me, the long run specialist shoe. I have now put 150 miles in this shoe. This has been one of the lucky ones that has made the grade and has been taken above and beyond 100 miles. Um, it's really interesting and actually Seth summed it up really well in his Hyperion Tempo versus Fuel Cell TC video. He gave it a 7.9 out of 10. He says anything over eight is a good shoe. I kind of agree with him. This, this thing has its flaws. It's quite unstable, can be due to the soft foam and the stack height but there's something about this shoe that when you get into gear and when you click into a groove it absolutely blows the competition away that you might want to choose for the long run and as he said he might even consider getting another pair for the long runs now I've heard so many people in reviews talk about these things as racing shoes. Let's get one thing clear. This is the TC. And although New Balance claim on their website that you could race in this thing, I just wouldn't. It's a training and competition shoe, which means it's gonna be the training partner to the RC, which is racing and competition. So let's just make that clear. It is on the heavier side. I think it's over 10 ounces in my size, but it is just, the plate, the foam fuel cell midsole came second in my midsoles of 2020 video a few weeks ago. And for good reason, this thing is a massive advocate as to why fuel cell works so well, even better with a carbon plate. So this for me is now reserved for long runs, longer tempo sessions. I will get this out if I wanna go and do 18, 20, 20 plus miles, um, or maybe a longer cycle track tempo that I have run here, 10, 12 plus mile tempo run. This is the shoe that I tend to lean for. And the final shoe that we are using at the moment in our summer training is the Saucony Endorphin Pro. And I hear you ask, why are you including this shoe into the video? Because I'm actually using it a little bit more than I thought I would. So I bought the next percent, which I'm not gonna include in this video because it's not gonna be used for training at the moment. That thing has been tested and boxed back up for race day. I want to keep that. It's a lot of money. I'm not gonna waste that on training. Saucony, however, came out and said that you can expect the same durability from the Endorphin Pro and the same performance as you can for the majority of their shoe lineup, like the Kinvara 11, were their words. That was an Instagram post from Saucony, which insinuates to me that you should be able to get three, 400 miles out of this shoe minimum moving forwards with it still holding out performance. And with that in mind, I've decided to take the bull by the horns and test it. I'm not gonna be using it a whole bunch, but I'm gonna be using it a little bit more. And I aim to get this thing 
over 100 miles and beyond by the end of summer with various testing, speed sessions, time trials, whatever it might be, this is going to start to become a bit of a go-to shoe in that speed area. So that's why I want to include it because I want to let you guys know that I will be using it. I said in the beginning when I bought it, I'm going to keep it box fresh for race day. Let me be honest with you, I will consider buying a second pair of these if my first pair do get to the point where I don't feel they're good anymore with the foam and the midsole, I would get another pair. I love them that much. Saucony have done a phenomenal job with this shoe and so that's why I want to include it. So similar to the end of the last video that I did wrapping up the spring of the winter spring training shoes I was using, I dropped in a little section talking about some of the shoes I was excited to be testing coming up to summer but I've realized now now that we're here, a lot of those shoes that I mentioned, I'm actually not testing. And some of the reasons for that is simply because the manufacturers are not making the damn shoes in my size, which is driving me mad. It's first world problems. I get that. But UK size 13, some manufacturers, Adidas, Reebok, even some New Balance shoes, the Beacon V3, that was high on my hit list. I cannot try that shoe because they have not made it in my size. The Asics Metarator, Meta Racer, I cannot try that shoe because it's not in my size. So I'm having to revise a lot of what I want to test out. So let me tell you three of the shoes that I'm keen to try over the next couple of months. And then I'd love to hear some suggestions from you guys in the comments below if I can't end up getting those shoes in my size. So the first one I want to try is the New Balance for, uh, Fuel Cell Prism. That came out earlier this month. I've seen a couple of reviews on it already. Well, I haven't watched them. I don't want to know what it's all about, but I've seen a few people have snagged a pair. So I'm looking forward to trying that. Fuel Cell Midsole, as I said, is my favorite. And in my opinion, because I'm a shoe reviewer that reviews shoes that fits in with my training and not just the newest, glitziest, glammiest shoe out there, I want something that works. And I know Fuel Cell works for me. And so that's why I want to try those shoes. As I said, can't get the Beacon V3, so they're scratched off the list. The Rincon 2, I'm on the fence about. I was really hyped to get that shoe, but now, next month, I have the Atreyu Voyager coming. I pre-ordered this thing back in February or March. It's uh, being shipped out in July, so I'm super excited to test that, and I kind of envisage those being extremely similar to the Brooks Hyperion Tempo. And so that's gonna leave me with two really good, lightweight, under 10 ounce shoes in my rotation. Do I need a third with the Rincon? I don't know yet. I'll see what I feel like. I might get a bit of FOMO and want to buy the Rincon because you know how much I love the Rincon version one. It was my shoe of the year. And as far as I'm concerned, I know there's minimal changes. It's just the upper. But if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The only thing wrong with that shoe is the durability, which is horrific. But those 180 miles that I got out of that shoe were absolute pleasure. So I might get those. And the other thing that I want to keep my eyes to, uh, ears peeled for eyes peeled for and ears to the ground for, it's the Saucony Endorphin Speed. The Endorphin Pro is like nothing I have tried. It is a phenomenal racer and I want to get a speed, the speed to complement the Endorphin Pro to see how this matchup works. So those are the three shoes that I am really keen to get over the next three, uh, two, a couple of months. Let me know in the comments below if there are any that I should be keeping my eyes peeled for. Please don't say anything from Adidas, from Reebok, <sighs> drives me mad. Anything that is size 13 that doesn't stock it, I can't try. But anything else, let me know in the comments below and I would love to try them out. So that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed seeing the shoes that I'm using during my training throughout summer. Many more to add to the collection and part two will come at the end of summer when we'll wrap it all up and we'll talk about all of the shoes that I've used and all the miles we've put into them. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content and as always, I will see you on the next one. Until then.